Welcome everyone to Expanding Your Consciousness through sharing stories and discussion. And tonight we have an open forum and we're just going to share stories and uh, ideas uh, and the observations we may have as well about consciousness. And it has been just over uh, three months since this group uh, started. And I started it because when I reflected on my life, I realized I had unusual experiences that kind of went beyond the five sense reality that we are in. And so I thought, well, I'm not the only one that has these experiences. So I thought I'd start this meetup group and encourage others to share their stories too. So we have the Ex Expanding Your Consciousness YouTube channel, and uh, you can look at some of those videos online. I'll put the link below this. Uh, uh, in the meetup uh, messages. Okay, so I'm going to just open this up to the group and it is a reminder that as people share thoughts and ideas, uh, just be open-minded. Right, any comments, any thoughts, any stories that people want to share? Penny. I have two things I wanted to ask the group about tonight. Um, one was, and, uh, the concept of free choice. Many teachers teach that we have free choice, but my teacher taught we don't have free choice. If we want free choice, we have to work like hell to get it. It doesn't. It's not available readily. It's. It's. Uh, we do. We don't have choice. The other topic was the concept of self love. I just don't understand what that means. <laughs> I understand what self looking after yourself is. That's good. I got that. But I sure don't know what self love is. <laughs> so but I got all, you know, those are important to me, but I don't know how important they are to everyone else. So I'm open minded about not even talking about them if you like. Well, I'm just, uh, with the free choice, did he give um, example, like, did he explain what he meant by that? He did in some detail, and um, I wrote a poem about it. So <laughs> let me... Uh, Let's hear it. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> okay, I'll just read the poem. Don't forget, you've already done the one on water. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So this one's short. <laughs> I chose to be happy, so why am I sad? I chose to be good, but turned out to be bad. I chose to be rich, so why am I poor? I chose to be witty, but I'm still a boor. The notion of free choice is for the naive, for Egypts and rock stars and those who believe. Choosing is easy, choosing is fun. Getting your choices is what won't get done. I chose to marry sweet, fiery Brigitta. Her no broke my heart. Now I drink margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> I toast to my sorrow in a clear voice, imbibing tequila as my drink of choice. <laughs> oh, I'm so oh, sorry lady. that isn't longer. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful so what, absolutely beautiful <laughs> thank you yeah. so, so the point is though that we are biological creatures and so that means we have to if we choose to not breathe guess what happens <laughs> <laughs> we had a little chat about breatharians a little while ago well guess what happened to them you know, there, there, there may be the, the ones who chose not to eat and they had the fortitude or training or whatever to actually pull it off. It took them, they didn't just snap their fingers and say, oh, I choose to not eat anymore. It took a lot of work. And of course, there's all the ones, the fraudsters. So free choice isn't. We don't have free choice unless we really work at it. That's what he taught. And actually, it's my two best teachers. My my original teacher's name uh, was Mervyn Brady, my first 
sort of holy man teacher. And, uh, and, and, and he was quite blunt about it. You know, free choice is fantasy land. My second teacher, though, my current teacher, is a traditional Tibetan Buddhist with a monk, you know, the guys that were raised in the monasteries. Same story. He doesn't use the same wording. He's more, a little less blunt. Uh, but if we want to get free choice, we've got to work at it. We've got to meditate for long times. And otherwise, we're, you know, their story is we're trapped in samsara, trapped on the planet Earth, which means trapped in this body, which has its limitations. That's true. So I keep hearing all these stories about free, having free choice. And but it doesn't, doesn't, if you have free choice, you do, you might have to want, work at it though, but it's your choice to achieve it. Then you work at it. I mean, does that come into it? Yeah. You're not talking about your body age. Of course your body ages, but you can work. Some people can work, do work on, on keeping more fit. Yep. Um, some, some things do work, but you have to work at it. So your choice is to, to work hard to get there that's it so if you work hard or i call uh, i call it training that's what i call meditation you're training your mind so if you do that successfully now you can earn free choice up to a point limited free choice we'll call it and i it's guess if you can free. pardon me it's not free yeah <laughs> that's the catch right. it's it, it's yeah, I guess that's maybe what it is. We Sometimes we think we have choice, but it's, is it really free choice? Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. I think we, we have choice, but like you say, we have to work at it, you, you know. Yeah. There is, you know, you can choose to be happy, but you're going to have to really work at it. You, know, you have to yeah. Uh, yeah. It can be a decision and changing a perception, but it's all, you're constantly, well, at least I am constantly working at it you know because you, there's things that always knock you off of that you can be happy for a while but then you'll get you know something will uh blindside you or whatever and then you have to work at getting back to your center so yeah that, i agree with you 100 but you do have choices some of them harder than others some maybe not attainable so yeah well, I'm sorry, I know I'm talking too much, but there's something else that came up. Um, this, this whole concept of thinking positively. Mm -hmm. Thinking mm -hmm. positive has positive outcomes, and that's, that's not necessarily a physical, um, that's not physical work, it's an attitude. And um, I find that for that, that there is some truth to that. I think, I think you can choose to be, to react to certain things certain way, and there's a different outcome than if you think negative, there tend to be negative consequences. Mm -hmm. And I know a couple of people like that who uncannily think negative and negative things happen to them. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe that's in there too, is that maybe part of it? Uh, Buddhists teach the law of cause and effect. So maybe that's what's going on in the people you're thinking of, where their thought patterns being negative cause certain things. And those things are, it's pretty hard to have a negative thought pattern create something positive. I suppose it's possible. If we ask ourselves, uh, like, why are we here right now? Um, some people might say, well, I, I chose to come. Um, mm -hmm. I, would, I would say um, this was the best deal. At this time, on this date, this was the best deal. If it wasn't, I would be home or I'd be, I'd be someplace else. I would be doing something mm -hmm. else or thinking about something else. I, I always uh, find that when there's options available, the one I always end up going in the direction of is the one that looks like the best deal every single time so the it's where the strongest desire is like if you if it's between door a and door b you have no you, you don't care which door if the doors aren't open but as soon as the doors open 
then you can look and see what's behind them. Then you start feeling things. You know, if it's, if it's an experience you've had before, if it's an experience you haven't had before, you know, you start feeling things. And the strongest feeling seems to win out every time. So um, I can talk a lot about this because I uh, went on a journey once to find my own free will because some, because I knew I had free will and, so, and somebody I had great respect for said, no, 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 there is no such thing. That made me really mad. And I fumed about that for a couple of weeks because I had so much respect for this person. Like, how could they think that? And so I thought to myself, how do I get out of this mess? And the obvious thing popped up into my mind. Well, I'll get out of it by turning my attention inwardly and I will find my free will and I will figure out how it works and if it has limitations and whatever. And then I'll go to this person and tell them why they're wrong. And I went on a journey that got me to change my mind because I discovered that I was wrong and they were right. And truth was more important to me than anything else. So I ended up realizing, nope, no free will. There's simply desire constantly coming and going within us. And we always head in the direction of whatever the strongest attraction is. I mean, that's just normal. By the time you go, I choose that, you, you're already knowing where you're going to go. That's why you say, I choose that, right? I, I'm going in that direction. But, but something has to happen to get you to feel like saying that to yourself. And that's mm -hmm. the desire that comes up and you go, oh, yeah, well, I'll go to the group tonight because I've been going. I want to go and <laughs> da, 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 da. And so those are the reasons. But I don't take credit for that. I mean, I just I'm re, I'm responding to what pops up into my consciousness. That sounded great. You know, that it makes so much sense. I think, wow, I wish I hadn't forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was good. Seema, do you have anything to comment on? I mean, where do you think that desire comes from? Who knows? Yeah, exactly. Most of your habits, I think. But um, I believe in uh, to talk about free will because life is a journey. And yeah, we do have to sometimes make efforts to get get to certain places and but that's the whole point whether it's and the whole the whole purpose is expanding our you want to call it expanding our consciousness you want to call it spiritual awareness and um some some people they don't even go after these things and we choose to be here because we are after the meaning of life we are after the meaning like what's the, this whole life is meaning like means to us right we are after the truth and um maybe it's a desire to come here but that desire is within us i have that desire to come so that's kind of a for me it's like i choose to be here because i can go to the other meetup places or just not to be here but still i choose to be here and free will it's what differentiates us from other being on this planet like animals that don't have free wills plants that don't have free will they just be they are at their like perfect state already um but i have the free will to do stuff to them they don't they just if they, if they're like think about wild animals like like a wolf is a wolf they don't have a free will to be tamed when they i mean i guess we can tame them but just in general, in nature, they never tame, right? They are always going to be wolf, lions going to be always a lion. They don't have a choice, but we have a choice. I can choose to be, I have these all personalities within me. I can choose to use that, um, I, I don't know, to be a wild person or to be not a wild person, to be um, nice, to be bad. I have all these personalities within me. I can choose every second what what to what to use really uh and we have we all have certain personalities you might not like between us like i'm like i'm to a, some extent i always like had to challenge myself because i was just very shy and i had to challenge myself not to be shy and i had this choice i could have been shy and just not speak and because i had it in me it's like a really strong desire to avoid people but at certain um point in my life I was like I actually I need to somehow to get get on now to just kind of work around it and I made that decision um 
So yeah, I think free will, it's what makes us human. What's your um, criteria for, for choosing? Let's say there's two, two options in front of you. What's the criteria that you use to go be, for one rather than the other? There could be a lot of things. It really depends on what we're talking about here. Like, well, I mean, isn't it, isn't it always like what appeals to you the most? Yes. Yeah, if you think about it, the whole life is um, choosing between two points. It's like all dilemmas that we are all facing at any moment. And then we are choosing based on our desires or based on our really data, our information, like our mind, they have all these, like we have all these processors, like computers that they have. Like we have all these softwares within us and then we process all the information, good, bad, um, why do I go there? Why do I not go there? And then based on that logic or whatever it is in like desire logic, whatever inside me, then I make that decision. But it's all based on the processing of information in my head. So if there's a, if there's a door that's got a hundred dollars behind it and there's a door that's got 110 behind it and you can have either one, but not both are, can I predict, uh, that you're going to take the 110? Am I reading your mind or am I just, am I just it's, tapping I into something? I think it's very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And why is it, why is it that you would always take the Exactly. Then we go back to the processing of information. If it's just the money behind it and one is more than the other, then obviously we always go for more. Unless there's a catch. It's like, hey, if you go after this, then it's going to happen. Then I have to process it more. But if it's just that simple because I can analyze information, right? And some of the information is just like the obvious, like, yes, of course you go for more. Unless like you see, hey, there's more money, but then if you go this door, then this is also gonna happen to you, then I'd be like, okay, I need to think about it more. So it's, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I, no. I kinda, I understand Brent's point. It's like the one that's more desirable and that you don't really have a free will about it the one you're always going to go for right the one that but, you're but, but but don't people have different goals in mind there may be an ultimate goal like um like this she said i'm sorry i don't remember your name um sure. that that we're here because we want to expand our consciousness and not everybody does so maybe if, if you have a goal specific goal then all your choices are going to be towards that particular goal oh yeah i would mean so so you're still choosing it's you're still choosing then i mean yeah. you may want the hundred dollars instead of the hundred and ten dollars because you don't want to be greedy you know you never want to be greedy in your life and you decide you want the hundred dollars you have a different you know you have a because we're just assuming that everybody wants more money you're assuming that but that that not necessarily true maybe somebody's um somebody's choice is to take less because there would be more for somebody else left I oh mean, I'm just, yeah exactly I'm just, that's the catch that's the catch that hey if yeah, you take this yeah. then then that's why i'm saying if there is a catch to it then i have to process it more but if it's simple as hey there's more money here there's no other catch and you go for more unless yeah if you go for more then the the next person like there are two people and then if you go for 110 the other person is gonna be left with 100 then that's another choice i guess so, I, I'd uh, like to, i would like somebody to explain to me why you found why would you why did you find out you don't have free will i i i need to know understand that okay well the first the first thing i i did was i said okay well i'll just like pay attention to what happens and one day i'm in my living room laying on the floor i just did some yoga and i was feeling you know really good really great you know everything was fine nothing in my head particularly and then a few minutes pass and then all of a sudden i'm like getting up off the ground and i thought to myself ah i've just made a choice to get up fantastic i'm going to look into this so by the time i stood up i closed my eyes and i went back inside and i thought okay what just happened and i looked for a choice point i looked for you know when this happened so i found myself laying there i found myself feeling what i was you know just there happy and then I noticed, oh, all of a sudden this, this like energy came into me. It just went, 
came right into me and my body started moving automatically and just started getting up. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting. I never saw anything like that before. And so uh, then I said, OK, well, I must I must have made a decision after that. You know, and then I looked closely at what happened. And keep in mind, this was just seconds before. So I was as close as you could get to it. And um, I couldn't find an, a point at which I decided to get up. I just found this energy coming into me and causing my body to move. And I was okay with that because when that energy hit me, I had the desire to get up. I didn't feel the desire to get up until that energy hit me. Then I had the desire to get up and I was fine because we're fine. If you can, you know, if you can fulfill your desires easily, we're happy campers. So I was fine as soon as that energy hit me. But while I was laying down, I was fine just being there. And I did, and I had no desire whatsoever to get up. So that's one of the things that hit me. And then this, a similar thing hit me a few days later. I'm watching, you know, I'm looking at my computer screen. All of a sudden, the spiritual sp saying comes into my head and my hand starts moving toward the book on my table that has the saying in it. My hand got halfway there and I realized, ah, I just made a choice to reach for the book. And I closed my eyes and I went back inside again. And I saw where the the the, the feel the the thought came up of, of the saying and the feeling came up of the desire to want to read it. And my hand started moving toward the book. And, and it's like, I couldn't find a, a choice point. It was just like the hand just like started moving on its own. And the more I did that, the more I started realizing that I was constantly, you know, going from one thing to another in my, in my head, thoughts and feelings were arising. And I was always following the desire, the strong desire that was there at the time, wherever that was heading. I was always going in that direction. And so I had a bunch of experiences where that would happen. You know, I'd be walking around and suddenly a thought would come to mind and I go, and then I'd start moving in a different direction physically and I'd stop and I go, okay, where was the choice point? And I did this for a while and I could never find it. I never found an actual point at which I made a decision. And then I started thinking about where did I learn about free will? Well, it was when I was a kid was when people told me that I had free will. You know, right about the time you're learning there's a Santa Claus and an Easter Bunny and a Tooth Fairy. Oh, and by the way, you have free will and don't make stupid choices. That kind of thing, you know, was there. So I had that memory, but I couldn't, when I actually looked for the actual choice point, I never could find it. Mm -hmm. So you're saying it's external? No, I'm saying it's internal. Like it's all internal, everything's internal. It's like your thoughts and your feelings are constantly rising in the moment. Like right now, whatever thoughts you're having, whatever feelings you're having, you can't ever predict that stuff, by the way. This is really important to understand too. Like right here in this next moment, like what's your next thought gonna be? What's your next feeling gonna be? And you can't tell and won't know it until it arises into consciousness. And then you know what the thought is, then you know what the feeling is. So it's only it, like when you get solid in the present moment and you realize that things are constantly coming to you and in, in you and fulfilling you and coming up within you and you're watching that happen and you're moving in accordance with whatever the desires are that, that come in. And um, it's easy for me to say that and, and, and see it right now because it's, it's, it's just become a part of my life. And, uh, but I had to actually try and prove somebody wrong who, who, who said free will doesn't exist. I had to try and prove it wrong or I never would be talking like this right now. I'd be like everybody else just believing I had it. But because I went through that process of trying to prove somebody wrong, I, dis, I discovered from my own experience that there was no, I couldn't find a choice point anywhere. And then I asked myself, well, why would I choose to do anything anyway? And it would be because it felt like the best deal to do that rather than something else. If you watch yourself and pay attention, you'll find out that you always head in whatever the direction is towards in that moment where you want to be the most, where you want to go the most, whatever is the strongest attraction. And that can happen in the next instant. Like you can be just doing nothing and a thought or a feeling can come in. I'm thirsty, got to go to the bathroom, whatever it is. And depending on the circumstances, you'll get up and, and go to the bathroom or you won't because of what else is happening there first. But it's always it's always something that, that comes first, that, that desire that, that comes into us because you cannot predict the next instant. So we're not consciously causing the next instant to be what it is. There's something else in us that's doing that. Okay, so I, that's what I meant. I didn't, I didn't mean external. I actually meant it, it's. I always think of. I always I always break things down to the me, myself, and I, and and from somewhere within you, then 
this consciousness is coming to make. Is that what you're saying? This consciousness is coming. Everything it's, comes it's, it's, like the, it's like the muse where they talk about it for an artist or a poet um, that there is that something. I, I have a lot of friends who are artists, um, artists too. So they say that they they just it comes through them, basically. That it's yeah. not coming from them; it's coming through them. Right. So that's that's similar to what you you mean. Yeah, and and you could have an attachment to that idea that you're the creator or whatever, and a lot of people do. They think that the thoughts that are arising in their mind they're somehow causing or they're somehow doing something. Like there's a lot of people in spirituality who are who say I'm doing this, I'm co-creating this, I'm causing this to happen, you know. And I don't think they realize that before they can even say that, that has to arise in their consciousness, and it's coming from somewhere else, and it's coming through them, it's coming into them. Like we're all we're all transmuting all this energy all the time. But I don't think we're the initiators, we're the creators of anything. I I can't find any of that inside myself. Don't you think that? Um that thinking void the responsibility of us like if somebody kills somebody else then they would say you know what it just came to me and i know um i didn't do it i i didn't rob your car I didn't that's, kill you. that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's the thing that the thoughts and the, the desires arise um and they're not always good thoughts or desires and you have to have that presence of mind in the moment to yeah okay you can see this thought it's an, a lot of problems can that can cause a lot of problems yeah if you're and observing the court, that, they would say if you're mindful of those, those thoughts and desires then you are choosing which you know you could say well i might want to do some harm but then you might say that's not the best choice i don't really don't desire that maybe you want to have a better yeah, you're really angry with somebody, like somebody is doing really nasty things to you. You get the desire to kill them and you just do it. Hey, you know what? I just did it because of that desire. I, I, that would void the responsibility of you. Mm -hmm. And I think I think what you're saying, I'm partly actually with you. Like what you're saying that it comes from within us. That's, that's what we do with connection with the consciousness too. Like when we connect, um, the, the consciousness runs through us, but the consciousness itself, it's like a network, it's like cosmic internet. It has two, it also divided in two networks, positive and negative. So it really depends on which network you're getting connected with. It, it, so it can run through you. And you, you said that I, I got that urge to get up. I felt that energy that happened to me too. Um, but the whole point of human being is the is the power to to choose and um we have to just to be conscious of what we are doing uh even the the, the connection with which network or which if you want to be a good person if you want to be a bad person that is also a choice um because then you go to all this prison they said well you know what i just god wanted me to be here because i all had all these bad desires inside me it wasn't me i was just i'm a victim here um and that that can happen can any the the art the discussion that we're having is showing something it's something emerging and that is i don't think we really know this thing we say has free choice what am i because uh, it seems to me that what we're saying in a roundabout way is that our identification as I, this is, this is me, changes. There are many different minds that we are conscious of, and the one we pick as the one where the, the, the mind that's paying attention to some thought now, I think that if it's possible that the thoughts exist and our mind just moves from one to the other rather than the mind exists and the thoughts just move through it so i think we should give some credence to that that our mind isn't what we think it is yeah and i think we thought about we talked about this uh, we have different selves inside us and it's all who's the driver um yeah. have you watched that cartoon Walt disney cartoon i forgot the name 
but it's basically uh, you're in the mind of this girl who moves from one city to another and then she has all these characters and it's a cartoon but it's very true so it has a headquarter in, its, in her mind and there are all these characters that they're playing a role have you seen that I know. No, but i'd like to see that yeah it, it's a yeah it's an animation what do you yes. know what's it called i forgot very interesting yeah. yeah so that's basically it so she has all these characters like anger or fear yeah. or joy and it's really at any moment one of them can be a driver and can be the manager of that headquarter and based on who's driving at that moment she has all these different feelings yeah and i think that is very true that is very true of us as human i'd really like to see that movie because that's coming in line with with my view of the universe that when we, we, what we're identifying with, that's what we want to choose. And that's what we have not chosen. We were, when we were innocent little children, they gave us a name and an identification. And poor me, I wound up being a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. How, how did that happen? <laughs> Fortunately, I have free choice, so I corrected it. <laughs> oh, God, Are you getting close to home there, Ken. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, Faith, do you have any comments, Faith? Uh, yeah, I just remember um, going to the meditation uh, Ken was talking about in Buddhism, something about Buddhist meditation, our teacher calling it a choiceless observation. So, mm. uh, yeah, it, it's a complex topic, right? So we have free will uh, in conscious decision-making, uh, of course, uh, but in terms of sitting in silence, looking inside, and then observing what's happening at the level of uh, the somatic sensations and the sankharas that are arising, it's a choiceless observation. So we don't really have free will in that way. Like we don't really have a choice what, what arises because we're observing nature the the phenomenon of nature occurring at the level of the somatic uh form does that make sense <laughs> so that's kind of reminded me of that um situation that um those experiences and i have experienced that but in terms of uh free will yeah i agree with uh i think most folks here uh feel that uh uh in terms of your actions or your speech and that kind of thing um we don't have a free will over our thoughts like thoughts come in or whatever uh but mm -hmm. i've tra been trained to just try to observe and not react <laughs> easier said than done but um so yeah that's my that's my perspective on it and my experience yeah <laughs> and thanks for asking. one of the uh, ancient civilization, but the, the, the Turtle Island natives, uh, North American uh, indigenous people, used totems, totem animals, and those represented different types of minds. So a mountain lion might be a fierce fighter, and a frog would be into transmit transformation, and you know all the. So that's how they described their mind in terms of their legends um, and they would identify this totem and find out what there was a whole series of formulas and everything for exercising that analysis self-analysis uh, so and your, there was your center animal and your north animal and your east animal and south and all that and that was their way of saying what we're say when there's different minds that present themselves and the trick in their case is to get control so it, as they evolve spiritually the goal is to get control so they are the ones that choose which totem animal or which mind is going to be useful in that particular situation that they're in um, so that's them working on getting free choice free choice of which of these animals to pay attention to. So Brent, what you were referring to as that seems endless series of little things that present themselves one after the other, um, 
the Buddhist theory that they call that a subtle impermanence. And what happens is every instant or it's like a movie where there's a little frame, then there's another frame and another frame. And each frame is when it starts, it is caused by the last frame. Yeah. So there is a cause and effect karmic thing going on there. That so there is a thread that unites them. They're not random. They're caught. They're caused. The only catch is sometimes the frame that appears now was caused many frames ago. So yeah. that's the part that makes it a little tricky. This, but but the theory, the subtle impermanent theory, is exactly what you're describing. It's just in you know Buddha described it in in his mythology and you're describing it from your experience uh, but that concept of multiple minds and one mind taking charge yeah that's just well I like a, you know i think buddha said mind matters most so uh getting a hold of be becoming more conscious of your emotions and your feelings yeah. and your thoughts and uh and that way we can avoid any um wrong action or wrong uh or you know verbal action as well mm -hmm. so yeah and meditation was the main way of doing that vipassana meditation and the five precepts and you know the eightfold noble path so. I, I guess i just wonder though are we not uh, more than these physical bodies are we not multi-dimensional beings and can we be guided from other aspects of ourselves to do certain things in this material realm and i say that because i had two experiences in Cairo. i probably had many but uh two in particular that stick in my mind where i was guided to go to a certain place to get information so in uh, one situation, there was um, a new bookstore, a relatively new bookstore. Uh, I'd say maybe a five minute taxi ride from where I lived. And I woke up that morning, it was a weekend, and something <clears throat> said, go to that bookstore. And I thought, well, I really didn't want to go to that bookstore because all the books were in Arabic, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, but I, you know, it was a really strong push to go to that bookstore so i went there i walk in i see all these arabic books i'm going like why am i here you know but then they had a second floor and i went up to the second floor and they had you know some english books and again like you know hidden down like you know, on the bottom shelf you know behind these books was this book called Hands of Light by Barbara Ann Brennan, who at one time was a physicist for NASA, and she left that to become a hands-on healer. So wow. getting that book and reading about hands-on healing moved me into an area of learning about energy work. You know, so, um, and, uh, you know, another story was, you know, again, like it was a Christmas break. This was 2012. And all the teachers at the school, because I was an international teacher, would say, you know, so Diane, what are you doing over the holidays? I said, well, Dave's coming over, you know, uh, he'll be flying over and uh, we'll be doing the Nile cruise, that sort of stuff, right? But he'll fly over after Christmas. So he's coming over around the 27th, okay? So I'm thinking, I'll just hang out. But when I got home from school to start the holiday, the strong message you have to get to Rome. Like, get to Rome, get to Rome, get to Rome. I'm going like, why would I go to Rome? If I, every international teacher I talked to that I traveled to Rome would complain about how they were, you know, how they had their purse stolen or this happened or it was filthy or blah, blah, blah. They had a complaint about Rome, okay? <laughs> and within, like that was on a Thursday night and on a Saturday morning, I'm in Rome, mm -hmm. right? By the Vatican, a strong push to go, you know, uh, explore that whole area, right? So I was picking up information that I need to share with others later. 
right? So I, I guess what I'm saying is sometimes when we feel, I'm wondering when these choices are really something else guiding us to go there and that information is important to us later. Yeah. Um, you sound like you have very, very distinct messages that you can recognize as not as not something that you would normally think so it, it it feels like it's coming from somewhere else you're being guided that's it's clear that way yeah, yeah. i have that i have that experience when i talk about uh, something like being in the flow and you can be in the flow or out of the flow <laughs> and 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 if i'm in the flow i have an inspiration to do something and it leads to something else which leads to something else which eventually leads to and 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 there is a flow and sometimes there isn't a flow it's as if it's as if I, I i think that i made a choice and it's trying to stop me and then i go from there and it stops me again yeah. so when i'm in the flow it seems like i'm being guided towards something that's that's another aspect maybe you know of 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 getting guided but your guidance is is very specific you recognize it as an out as well not an outside i don't mean outside but it's coming from within but it's it's guidance from somewhere yeah there's guidance from somewhere and sometimes you do not know why you had to be somewhere you may yeah. not know for 10 yeah. years why you had to go there right yeah that's true i i have had that by the way the name of the movie is inside out inside out yeah I oh, just yeah yeah I looked it up. So. Diane, um, have you ever had that feeling, that strong feeling that you went with, and it turned out to be some something ridiculous or, or was terrible experience or something like that? No, but often I may, like the trip to Rome, I did not know for a lot of years why I had to go. I kind of went thinking, well, you know, maybe this has to do, because I'd been reading about energy and how energy works and the more we focus on something the more concrete something becomes that sort of stuff but um no i i realized afterwards it was more information about and i'm not catholic by the way so for uh me to go to saint peter's and that you know <clears throat> why <laughs> why stand the morning all that time right you know you but I realized it was information that i had to share with people especially catholics and that so anyway uh kenny so right here i want you to stop and think about it. let's switch it around a little instead of saying you were guided let's say you in the same situation that you observe which one is you so it's possible that the real you is the guide and this thing that you think is you being guided that's not you well that's why mm -hmm. i think we're more multi-dimensional right mm -hmm. well, so you could say multi-dimensional mm -hmm. but it's, 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 it's be even more strict than that yeah yeah because this you that you we, we're whose face we're looking at the screen now this is just an ordinary human body and we know mm -hmm. what happens to that body someday ashes yeah. to ashes dust to dust but the you who was guiding you that's that's you but you don't think so that you no ashes to ashes dust to dust for that right so why have you chosen <laughs> i don't think you had free choice why did you choose to identify with this hunk of meat here rather than the guide that's the, the all wise guide that told you to go to rome or to the bookstore or wherever see what are we are we the hunk of meat or are we that thing that we think is something else <laughs> Well, that's why, you know, I mean, some people may say, oh, it was an angel that, you yeah. know, uh, sent me yeah. there, you know, God sent me there or whatever. But to me, it's like something, right? Whether that something is, it could be part of me, whatever, right? Well, see, that's, the, that's my whole point is what are you or what am I? See, what are we identified with? And that's, that's the real question here. Because who has free choice? Well, we're thinking, so let's say that there's the dog and then there's 
so for for me if i take a pet dog for a walk i'm the guide and it's following me now for kelly it might not be the same thing and for you and the big person up there whatever that thing was that guided you to go to rome or to the bookstore that might be really you and the leash is around this person's neck and it's not it thinks it's me because that's part of the pack or whatever but it doesn't know about these angels that you really are or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. so that i think is a very serious question and it's really mm -hmm. what we're talking about we're all mm -hmm. saying it but we aren't ready to flip out of being a piece of meat that goes ashes to ashes and dust yeah. to dust. We all want to let the, yeah. there be some big angel or God or something up there and that's guiding us, but it's not me. I'm not that. No, I'm Mr. That, meat that, Man here. <laughs> that's why I like the concept. I, I think about it a lot, uh, not lately, but uh, me, myself, and I, three different aspects of yeah who I am. So me is the person that you see or the other people see. Um, myself, I, I, I'm not, I mean, I, I think myself is what I think I am and possibly the I is my consciousness that's connected. Yeah, the mind. And so it's much deeper. It, it would be my soul essence and my myself is the medium ground, not, not who I present, but who I think I am. Mm -hmm. And then the me, it's, it's just an interesting expression. And uh, I think yeah. you can, and, and the idea that I is just a one, it's, it's the symbolism of it is just one, mm -hmm. you know, um, that, that's it interesting, that's interesting to me. You're talking about, right? Okay. Like which perspective you're talking about, like a broader perspective, it's all one. It's not that's that right. it's one, it's all oneness. And then on this perspective, then there are, we call it drivers, the driver that come to this world and this is a carriage. So I'm just like, get on this carriage and exactly. then I leave this carriage and then I just pass on to the next world. Um, but what Diane said, I can identify with that. Um, and also what you said, Ken, about karmic, the, the karma. So it's like, we have all this desire within us and then this desire has to have a response from the consciousness. So then that consciousness based on our desire can lead us to these different places. That's how I actually got to know Erfan Ahagre, the Halqa mysticism, because I had friends back in Iran telling me to go to his classes. And at that time I was not ready. I was just some other places doing my own thing. There were like so many of them I was like, no, I'm not going. Like I'm doing my own thing. I'm spiritual or whatever. And then I got here and all of a sudden I have no one around me, but I'm just like getting to thinking like, who am I? Right. Just, and then getting into all these, um, school of thoughts. And there's one name in my head, Taheri. It's, it was just loud and clear. It was, I don't know from where I was, I wasn't thinking about this guy. This is like after five years that my friends were like introducing me to this. And then I'm like, okay, let me just go and search him up. And then at that time I just like, connected with whatever he was saying something that I couldn't connect with any other all the other things that I was reading about so for me I had that desire and I also was guided by consciousness but I also had to make a choice for me making a choice I was before I was like just talking about drugs I think with friends last time uh, I was very much into smoking weed and it was actually one thing that was like really helped me to like clean my mind, clear my mind, just make me think. So it was very sacred for me. I just didn't want to let it go. When we when we go to Erfan Halre, one of the things is that we want to get connected, like we want to have like all this enlightenment. We have to get it directly. There, there should be like nothing between us. We shouldn't like get it through alcohol, drugs. And I was just not ready to give it up because I just like how much I liked it. So I actually remember I went through this process. Am I am I gonna give this up? And I didn't. And I didn't for like some years after. And then at one point I'm like, you know what? I'm not getting. I wasn't even getting in because be, before when I started like smoking, and I was smoking a lot. I was actually getting all these enlightenments. I was getting all like like 
things would come to my mind it was just like making my life so much better because of all the awareness i was getting and after that i wasn't even getting the awareness so at some point i had to make a decision just to you know what i had just to quit so i quit based on i like i didn't quit when i started from the but i quit like a few years after and it was all my decision i had the choice to quit right away i didn't and this is just my choice so i had the freedom of choice even though I was with Irfan Halal, I didn't quit it like right then. I, it took me a few years, again, based on my choice. I think so it's jur- both. It's both. You get guidance, but also it's your free choice too. Brent? I think the, uh, the jury's still out on who we are. Um, you know, like think about it. Like could a frog ever know what a frog is? Like we know what frogs are. Yeah. Could any animal ever know themselves like we know them? And uh, w- unfortunately, there's no one else on this planet that's smarter than us. So we're stuck. And so it, like for us to think that we could know who we are, I, th- I think is kind of silly, really, um, because like we, you know, the concept of what of the concept of who you are would have to arise in consciousness anyway. So whatever whatever you think about yourself, about who you are, that's an appearance in consciousness. It's unlikely that that appearance is the totality, the 100% totality of what we are. That's highly unlikely. So I, I, I do my best not to, not to be identified in, with anything because chances are what mm-hmm. I'm identified with is not the end of it. It's, mm-hmm. There's gonna be something to replace it anyway. And, I, and it makes me feel more open not to identify with an identity. And it also makes it easier to see that things are just coming and going on their own. And the idea that I'm controlling them or choosing, I think is, is also just not true. Um, because there's gotta be some, if there's choice being made, there's gotta be somebody making that choice. And so you're identifying with some kind of an identity of a person or whatever it is that's making the choice. That's and so, it. but that is, but that is an idea that comes into consciousness. It's not the hundred percent truth of the matter. So. I would rather like not worry about what I am, but just uh, watch myself as I move from thing to thing based on whatever desire is there. And that has worked out pretty well um, because I used to think I knew who I was. And and it's laughable now that when I think about that, it's just, I mean, there's, I don't think, I don't think consciousness in reflecting on its own existence and appearing within itself as something that it knows it exists. I mean, that's how consciousness can, that's how we know there's consciousness because consciousness arises within itself to be known by itself as this image of itself, right? That's all an image. So anything that comes into consciousness is really an image of something else that's bigger than it outside of it. So I think focusing on some sort of source of truth that you can find and I found one inside me and wherever you find your source of truth, whether it's a guru or whatever it is, then focus your attention on that and, and, and hang out there as long as the information is clean and clear and keeps coming. And when it stops, it's time to move on and find, find a deeper source. And I think by that, it's, that will be the quickest way to truth is just to find a source for truth. And do you connect with that, you know, through meditation? Is it something that you're experiencing you know through your practice or your attention to now or yeah yeah it's 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 about it's about talking out loud and it's about going inside and yeah it's about the present moment is it is it an energy that you feel like do you know when you're really kind of connected to what you're you're going for what you're well, after what something happens and clarity comes and then i start talking like mad and and clarity starts revealing itself because that's what my attention is on it's not on an image of myself or what i'm doing or how i'm doing it it's on what's arising in that moment which is where my consciousness is focused on as the moment changes so, and it's and it, my mind slows down because i'm talking about it so mm-hmm. there's a magnifying lens on that and so I'm watching that and I'm talking to myself about what that is. And that that gets on some kind of a train that's leading me into more and more clarity and truth for as long as it does. And then mm-hmm. it's over for that instant. For, for, for me, it's just an experience of holding this great um, kind of clarity, clear, but I'm not necessarily getting, you know, information that I could write down it's like a, a just a knowing that okay that's the 
that's this energy that I searched for, I found, I feel it within myself, but it's more than that. And it, it is something that's been with me as long as I've had consciousness, as long as I've been aware. And when I was a kid, it was the same. And I didn't, and I, and I experienced it. I remember being up at the park and, and, uh, and just being all by myself and, and knowing that there was this thing that I, I had experienced that I needed to stop and try and grasp again. And, and, and it took not thinking, not, not trying. And, and it was like chasing, you know, uh, your tail almost is what it was sort of like. And, but then as long as if I could let go, I would experience it. And so, uh, but then life happens and you kind of forget about these things, but it still remains. I was meditating today, doing exactly the same thing I was doing when I was a kid. And I, and I know this from when I was a kid. So there is this experience of consciousness of some kind of pure energy. There's not really words for it, but that's been the same. It is something that I have been able to experience. And it's, uh, to me, it is a piece of uh, that truth that we're kind of all looking for, maybe. And yeah, I was kind of wondering if anybody else had that kind of, uh, kind of experience with this, you know. Yeah. I've had periods, or no, at least one experience, where I just surrendered. Actually, twice that happened. You just kind of give up and say, like, it's whatever's out there, you deal with it. <laughs> you know, you surrender. Yeah. Yeah. And everything works out because you're not trying to yeah, surrender. Things and, yeah. and manipulate things, right? You just give up, kind of. Mm. So, anyway. The whole point of, well, I'm not like religious or anything, but Islam also means surrender. So the whole point is just surrender yourself. And once you surrender then, because we can talk yeah. about in the spiritual thing, in spiritual matters, we need to surrender in order to get that clarity. Yeah. But yeah, in, in like, earthly matter, that's where you need to put effort in to get where yeah. you want to get. Even let go in of your identity let go of your thoughts of yourself identity like uh i agree with friend some level is like images of your images of one we are but about identity i think we all have our identity i think the worst thing that can happen can happen to us is that to lose that identity and that happen when you get alzheimer or these other diseases like parkinson like they they lose all their memories they lose their identity and that's like the worst thing that can happen to a human being when you lose your identity because that's all you have and it's i think it's kind of different from selflessness when you just trying not to let your ego takes all the space like identity is how you make it until now like your ideas your beliefs i don't know i i, I to me mm -hmm. it's the, I, I differentiate the two that's interesting because I see I, all identities is just part of the ego. I don't, I don't see any, I, even as I'm a spiritual seeker, even I love God and all that stuff, everything. I, it's like, just, it's just all stuff that's going on in the mind, but there's something outside that there's something beneath that. There's something more than that, that is transcendent of all of that. Yeah, and exactly. I don't at even some, know at it, some perspective, yes, exactly. But at this level, I feel like our identity is what makes us me and makes you you. Like I look at you, you have certain identity for me. Like that's how I connect with you. Body wise, yeah. Not We're body, wise, body wise, but even who you are as a person, like how I see you, how your idea. But that person, the, but again, the person is just part of the ego. Underneath that is oneness. See what, like, if you can just feel mm -hmm. it right now, like there's a sense of oneness right here, right now, if you put your attention inwardly, that feels different than when we're alone, where now there's seven of us here. There's something about that that's very unique. And that's, that's oneness. And we don't know much about that, but that's more to what we are, I think, as mm -hmm. this, as this one minded one loving consciousness whatever it is that's up that's awakening to itself is one thing not a bunch of separate individuals you want to meditate on that i do it all the time i know but like <laughs> as a group right now for maybe 10 minutes we stop and and contemplate that 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 oneness that you know we 
we are and that we kind of have a sense of the, as, a, as a group? Well, that actually gets to what Brent, I think Brent, you were talking about you were watching sports one day and you felt a oneness just watching the, the athletes, right? So, uh, yeah, so that's actually, you know, Dave, it's a good idea. It gives you a sense of, you know, it, it'd be interesting to see after that 10 minutes or five or 10 minutes, what the shift is in the conversation. Or what we, what we might observe. What yeah, what we observe, yeah. Yeah, let's find out. Yeah, you want to, yeah, okay. I can send yeah. a little help on this one because I don't understand it. I don't understand oneness or unity. I understand the void or the, well, I have an understanding of emptiness. Uh -huh. And if we're all one in emptiness, that's, so that's a Buddhist concept. And if we're meditating on emptiness, where do I sign for Ooh. that? Yes. <laughs> Not meditate on anything, just like have, we have this idea of we want to like, just because when you want to meditate on one thing, then your, your focus is, that's where it is just like be just try to be open to anything and so, um, just try so, that connection with the consciousness maybe you get that clarity the the, the answer that you need through this um so this so this has not as much to do with the group of seven of us just to meditate until we get to i i, I have done that before just being able to stop thinking <laughs> and reaching a point that feels like nothingness is that what we're we're trying to do um, or is it i thought not, like uh oh go ahead brent try not to envision what it is because we really don't know what it's going to be but that's Just, my experience that's been my experience though so, so okay, i don't well, know okay whatever you want to focus on uh, or nothing or something or whatever let's yeah, just do for 10 minutes focus on breath whatever yeah, whatever when 10 minutes goes by we can we can talk about our experience and see what happens do you, uh, does anyone want to time? I got it. I got my timer set up. Oh, okay. And Faith, are you open to this too? Are you, we should mute ourselves, I guess. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah. Okay. All right. okay. Well, uh, I'll, I'll not mute myself because then we'll hear the, the signal. Okay. When it, when it does. Okay. Everybody just start breathing. Nice. Relax. And I'll gonna I'll start it now. Okay, we're back. That was really different. Uh, it was nice. I was thinking how nice it was uh, to be meditating with other people for a change. <laughs> and I, I yeah. would like that more often. Uh, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, it made a difference. I, I felt also that uh, as immediately I felt. First of all, I felt more expanded. Just uh, it's hard to describe, I guess, but. Uh, but yeah, and, and just I felt that connection with uh, you people as well, and another uh, dimension to it, found it, uh, that there was no thought. It was just no, uh, you know, how the thoughts will arise sometimes in, when you're meditating. And for me, anyway, the, it was just kind of immediately uh, just in a present, being present with no thought. And in, in a in a really, really nice peaceful feeling. Well, Diane had a continual smile on her face. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can freeze the photo and have just a photo up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the. <laughs> the <photo. laughs> I was going to say I should change that. Maybe I should frown now. <laughs> I, I was going to make a joke like, oh, gee. It's amazing how much you can get done in 10 minutes. I did my hair, did my teeth, <laughs> I washed my dishes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> can we talk about what we experienced or what we uh, yeah. in meditation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Faith? I don't know. I saw an image of a church, like a white church. And then I saw, like, I feel like my frequency just up leveled somehow it just wow all of a sudden um uh, with that meditation okay so there was like a, a body of water next to it, like a calm like blue like light blue it was almost like a puddle but it was like a little pond or lagoon or something and then there was something about like a ripple effect in the water and i i do get a lot of imagery so yeah, yeah. i don't know what how to interpret that 
I don't always know how to interpret it or what it means or is it all good stuff or and what is a, always a bright, a brightness and happiness coming is coming up soon you know and all this you know so i don't know <laughs> what, what did you say Sheila? Uh, i said water is always good water uh first means awareness so for, whenever i have a i have a dream and there's water in it i'm swimming that's that's good okay yeah thank you and what, what about the church what does that mean the, the church inside or the spirit inside it, it's all ha it has to uh mean something to you like i can't i can't tell it for you yeah you probably if you think about it or just like maybe just go through it again you, you'll know it inside you it's the inner inner spirituality the church is not a structure it's like it's inside of you that that's yeah, exactly you don't need to go to a structure to have the true spirituality it's actually it that church is yeah. in your heart it's, it's inside you know yeah yeah <laughs> you need 15 minutes to really understand that part <laughs> <laughs> so Brent, tell us it for you on the other hand uh, maybe oh, oh I, sorry go ahead i uh I was feeling sort of like waves of energy coming That's in me nice. and I felt uh, the pulse in my heart beating. Um, and then I like right now I can still hear it. There's really high frequency in my head right now and they're pulsing with my heartbeat. And it was kind of I don't know. Oh, and I saw I saw a bunch of us like it was like the people in the group. I kind of saw the heads of all of you guys. And then over here I saw I saw Brent come up over here. And it was like, I went, get thee behind me, Satan. You know, it was like, <laughs> get away from, you know, it was like, uh, uh, I was back here observing all of this. And so back here was a much better perspective than any individual perspective, including my own usually. So it was an interesting experience. And it was, uh, it was more than I would have thought would have happened in such a short time. Ken? Um, yeah, I have a, I have a bad pattern or sorry, a, a pattern that I'm not, uh, happy with in my meditation for quite a while now I, I slip into the dream time and I have waking dreams with varying degrees of control sometimes I can can control them sometimes I can't so I'm not happy with the way it's going and I'm trying to reach regroup and start all over again and and, and take it in the direction that I'm so I'm into Buddhism and there's a certain thing you're trying to do when you meditate and I'm not doing it uh, and I'd like to do it. So I'm going to, I got to shift around a little bit. You know, well, I thought I was too close to consciousness, but maybe I wasn't. Um, I, I felt the, the waves uh, like Brent did and there was a pulsing and I don't, I, I thought maybe it was just adrenaline because this is my first time with the group and and I didn't feel like I was able to disconnect the way I wanted to, but it was more almost like a swirling. I felt like I was going within like a, a tunnel. At least I was trying, but I felt and that's the thing. I was I, I, I was trying and I shouldn't be trying um, anything. And it felt like I couldn't sink deeper. So it was, uh, I was a little disturbed by that because I didn't feel like I could really let go as much as I wanted. I was too, too um, distracted, I, I guess. Um, but, but there was definitely, I didn't see anything. I, you know, the, it, it's just, like I said, it was like a, like a tunnel, like a whirlwind, like a funnel type of thing. Yeah, I was too, I was, I was like that in the beginning. And then I thought about just surrounding myself and I did that and I felt like I just like kind of getting into shape of a fetus like when mm -hmm. you're in your mom's uh, womb and then I thought I, I thought about Ken what, what he asked before about oneness uh, what is this oneness and then um so if you think about it, then just the tree of life came to my mind that if you think about it if there is because we have time here, but if you exclude time, what happens that me right now, then I'm going to be one with my fetus and then one with my mom. And then my mom is going to be one with her mom. So it's all going to be like, you know, one, one, and it's going to be like a tree. 
so it's like a tree so because we go like all the way down to i don't know like our like animals and then plants and that one cell and then planet earth and then planet earth to 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 the sun because like it all arises from like that or to uh big bang so it's all like the um tree of life and then i thought about identity that we talked and um so it's all so the identity part comes from that the driver that comes here it has a personality that's why there are two no two newborns they have the same personality it's because they bring uh, different knowledge with themselves here so that's why they're, they're very different and so our identity comes from our knowledge um and then when we go to the next word again like so we are accumulating all this knowledge and every each word that we proceed to we use this knowledge and um then so at, so from after this word so we surpass the place the space and then after we surpass the time and that's where we believe that we all go to hell and then we all go to heaven and that's and then at the end stage the, the big question is that uh, like we get the whole power the god power and and then at that point we are asked if we are together are we together god together or are you god because now we have all the power we have the power of creation for ourselves so are you by yourself so then our knowledge is going to help us to answer that question and that's where our identity comes from and then if we answer yes we are all together then that's when we dissolve to that oneness so then there is no identity there but up until that point, there is the identity and the identity is the knowledge that we carry from one world to another or like everything that we accumulate, I guess, from in this world. Yeah, because we've had these past lives and we bring those experiences. Yeah. Because uh, Tina, I know it's late there. You're in Toronto, right? Oh, it's okay. That's fine. But I also, and I want to address uh, what you were saying and also Ken, that, you know, kind of, that problem of really connecting kind of thing or, you know, meditating. And just this, just my personal uh, feeling about it. I find certain times of the day I can do it, especially in the evening for me. I usually find it's about 10, 10, 30, even if it's 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes. I have a hard time meditating early in the morning or any time during the day. So I'm just wondering, like I'm thinking of Kenny, like are there other times, certain times where you can meditate well and other times you can't? And same with Tina. I, I, I used to meditate in a group. Of course, we knew, we knew each other and it was a weekly thing and, and it was very powerful. Um, I, I actually did a meditation just a couple of days ago with a meetup here in Vancouver. I don't know if it's the same one. No, there's and a lot of meditation groups here. Yeah. Okay. No, no, that's that's the one. It was very powerful. It was, it was kind of a guided meditation and, you know, focusing on the body. And for me, it was probably the most powerful meditation I have had in a long time because um, I haven't taken the time to do it myself really. Oh, my batteries are gone, so I may be gone too. So. Okay, all right. Um, anyways, somebody else can talk. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Kenny, what about you, like with your meditation? Because you're saying you're having some problems or difficulties. That's right. I'm trying, uh, I need a, ren a renaissance. Um, no, it's me. I've got to have a Kenaissance. The... <laughs> The um, I'm certainly going to slip into some habits, and they're not serving me anymore. So uh, I, I drifted too far from the what's that saying? Anyway, I drifted too far from the source, and now I got to go back, and uh, so that's what I'm working on now. In fact, in January I went on a fairly serious uh, retreat, and. And during that time, I had a lot of clarity about what I wanted to do. And so I'm now trying to implement that. So um, the, what I'm being taught is uh, uh, in, uh, practice, a certain technique of meditating. It's 
uh, it's just like the martial arts. You do some, you do katas. You move your body in a certain way and then and you put it all together. And that's a way of training the body. So in, uh, in meditation, you do the same thing. At least my intention is to do the same thing, but it's meditating. So there's basic and then there's a little add on and then there's a little more sophistication and, and you just keep evolving as a meditator. Um, so I was on that path and I've kind of lost it and I've, I'm in the process of regrouping. Um, and, and so it, and it's, it's, ma, it's Mahamudra or tantra, Tantric Buddhism. Um, and it requires imagination and all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, so I'm uh, giving myself a smack up of the side of the head and starting all over again. <laughs> Maybe you just put so much thought in it. Maybe just like the answer, just surround, surround her to it. And then once you surround her, just let, let go of all the techniques everything that you know just let go of all the things that you know see what happens i fall asleep <laughs> it's okay fall asleep yeah. Yeah. yeah so i don't want to do that so i did that for a while put but a few years i'm still put my pants on one leg at a time <laughs> i i felt it was a little bit abrupt for me to go Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I usually lead myself into meditation and I was too aware of the time constraint. Yeah, I was just yeah. too, uh, yeah, it, you know. It but, was a spontaneous thing, really, right, Dave? To, to yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I liked it. It sort of, uh, yeah, I felt uh, a, 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 a connection, uh, you know. That's good. Yeah. I that. And I think Ken should try connection too. So just like think about or just like to say the word or say it in your mind, just connection and see how, where that takes you. Does, do you feel any different when you do that? Just try that. Well, one time. of the problems that I have is that I think I know what I'm doing. I think I understand the meaning of words. And that's a big problem for me mm. because tonight I actually encountered um, your, what you called unity. And I didn't call it unity before, but I just had to relabel it. Um, and it was, uh, it, when I first learned meditation, the very first thing, it was transcendental meditation. Yeah. And that teacher taught us, a, a, you say a mantra over and over again. So uh, he taught us the mantra and then let's go home and do it. And then once uh, every month or so, we'd all get together and we'd meditate together. And when we got together, we could, I, I said, wow, this meditation is better, better, whatever that means. In other words, it was a different feel. Mm -hmm. So now what I learned tonight was that different feel, that's what you guys are referring to as unity. It just feels different. And the reason it feels different is because there's six, six of you there. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I think, okay, that's because I always knew group meditation was better and I didn't know it. I felt it. So that's, so I, but, but my mind puts words on things and it makes mistakes when it does that. But when, if I want to talk to you about it, I have to have a word to say, because what can I say if, it, if I don't talk about a word, you know, use a word for it. So, so in this case, the word was a feeling. And, and you've talked about it. You said, oh, yeah, it's good meditating as a group and, and you can feel a difference. And I remember feeling a difference. And I felt that difference again tonight. And, I, and every time I meditate with a group of people, well, I shouldn't say every time, but most times I feel you. But I didn't know it was you. I thought I was just getting a some sort of weird feeling. But okay, that's you who's on, who I'm feeling. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I often, you know, I wake up most nights between three and four in the morning mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll say prayers and I'll meditate at that point. And I imagine there's, you know, eight billion of us on this planet. There's quite a few of us at that moment meditating. Mm -hmm. So I, in my mind and imagination and feeling connect with, I, I feel like I'm connecting with. 
however many other people are out there meditating along the same lines. And, a great uh, idea. <laughs> and I think it really <laughs> works for me. Yeah. You know, yeah, like that. Well, see, that's what tantric meditation is. Just imagine something mm -hmm. and then it becomes real. Mm -hmm. Well, for you, you imagined, I don't know, some small percentage of the 8 billion people. And that's quite a few people meditating with you. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Could be. Yeah. But then the problem with imagining is that you're still using your mind because you want to connect with that cosmic mind. You want to connect with well, that consciousness. I'm, you want to I'm familiar that. with I'm familiar with uh, tantric meditation as well. But the imagination is where you start, and and that's one of the first steps in in identifying. You imagine an entity, and you I start to identify with it and actually become yeah. that so it's the, kind of the fast track to uh, mm -hmm. to enlightenment um but that that's uh that's where you start but then it's you concentrate on the feeling of that and then you're embodying that and you're actually you know it, you get disconnected get, get going that way yeah I think maybe meditation is a pretty personal thing. There are different methods of ma meditating and um, the guided meditation where you're going somewhere and imagining things is, is more of a thought process to me, like uh, Shima said. And I'm, I'm trying not to think. <laughs> so, and that works better for me. Um, I, I, so I think there are different methods. One of the th the yeah. thing that we did this week that really worked well for me was letting your mind, your consciousness be aware of other parts of your body, right? Although you can't see them, you can focus on something and you have a feeling of it and you focus on the entire body until you are not a part of it anymore. That's the way it feels. It's like, so the body is, is outside or you're inside, you're not, you're not a part of it, but, but being able to focus somewhere else is what works for me until eventually I'm not connected to any of those other things. It's not like, like I'm watching them and, and then I get to the eye, the eye. Be an observer. The stillness, you know? So I, th I think there's different ways of doing things. If, if, if something doesn't work, uh, maybe it just doesn't work for you. But <laughs> for me, it's just connection. It's just like, as soon as I want to get connected, I have to get connected. There's no thought process. I just let it be, let it happen. But I, I kind of tune into my body and observe, just like you said, like as a kind of an outsider. I don't really get in like my thoughts or anything like that. I just try to just be and then see what happens. That's what I try to do too. Yeah. I have to split now. Have to finish up too. Oh, thank you. This was great. And I recommend we have another open forum. They're, they're, <laughs> they're pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, they are cool. So, and that was Brent's idea, actually. Brent's oh, great. It came through me. Yeah, it came through me. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I did, I did. Good night, everyone. Good night, Ken. Bye, Ken. Good to see you. And uh, Tina, I know it's late there. So uh, thank you for joining us. And thank you to everyone for joining this evening. Any, but any comments? Any, any comments, final comments? Before just we... wondering if anybody does know of any weekly or bi-weekly group of meditation that's happening, like for, you know, an, an hour meditation? Like a... there, there are tons of them all over uh, the meetup groups. Just, you know, just do a search on, on uh, meditation. A million of them will come up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So some are on Zoom, and then some are, I guess, if there's places open, they... they yeah, it'd be nice to go in person, and oh, I... in person, oh. Yeah, I do, I do my own meditation, right, Vipassana, but so I'm, I'm not really... I just kind of like the, the, the do, do your own meditation kind of style, you know, like go to the group, and then you're doing your own meditation, not necessarily a guided meditation, but... I don't know. I guess I'm just open to other things now, other kinds of meditations as well. So, okay. Just so you know, um, Expanding Consciousness is under the Vancouver Spirituality Network.
I'm in that big group and in that group are meditation groups. Okay. Vancouver Spiritual Spirituality Network on Meta. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other final comments? It's very thank enjoyable. It's nice, oh, to thank you. You. nice to meet you too. Thank yeah, nice to meet you, Tina. Okay. Friend. Yeah. Hope to see you all again. Mm -hmm.